Hi, Joe Pizinski here with Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Thank you to all my new subscribers and everybody that's been leaving me comments and thumbs up. It keeps me motivated to continue to do this. Thank you very much for subscribing and let's get on today's lesson. Uh, probably the most overlooked aspect of any lathe work is centering the tool. A lot of people do it a lot of different ways. One of the ways that I've seen people do it is with a live center in the tailstock and they get it real close to the point of the tool but I don't think I've ever seen a live center that is sharp enough to really give you a good reference on where the center of that tool is. Let me show you why it's important. If the tool is too high then the cutting edge of the tool is above center and chances are the diameter or the profile of the material is not hitting right on the tip of that tool. That's going to result in a couple of conditions excessive pressure so you're going to be dialing in and dialing in dialing in nothing's going to be happening and all of a sudden rah, you're going to be 25 thousandths below the surface of the material and it's just not going to be good it's going to push the material away it's going to cause too much friction and genuinely just not a good idea now on the too low side when the tool is below center the diameter of the tool as the material comes around it is going to be dragging on the nose of the tool and wear the nose of the tool off really quick the other byproduct of having a tool too low is that the part is going to want to climb up and over the tool and that is going to cause chatter. So if you're getting a, a noisy cut or uh, intermittent ugly finish going on in your part, chances are you're too low. The ideal scenario, tool right on center, gives the material a, a nice clean rotation, the chips peel right off beautifully and the tool will probably last longer than these other two conditions. Now if you have a chip breaker built into your tool, the ideal chip to produce is what's called a C or a 6, and you can see why it's called a C or a 6. They're not supposed to be really long, but sometimes that's unavoidable on real fine finished cuts or if you're cutting plastic or something and the chip breaker is just not practical, you're going to get a long piece. So keep the chips out of the way, don't let them wrap up and cause a problem. All right. The way I centered my tools, made myself a bar in the lathe, and we're looking straight down the spindle here from the tailstock. So this is a cross section of the bed. My bar sits right on the flat part of my front of my lathe, is perfectly on center with the lathe, so that when I move my tools over, I can register my tools on the top of that bar. And you're going to say, well, how do you measure that? What's, how do you find that? And that's a big problem, but it's a very simple problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you out in the, in the shop, and I'm going to actually show you the setup because it's really easy. Take a half-inch diameter pin, put a half-inch diameter pin in a collet, in a chuck, whatever. Make sure it's running true so this isn't any type of uh, false reading you have here. Make sure it's running concentric. Turn the machine on. Then turn the machine off. Let's let this sit still. If this is a 500 diameter, take another pin, 250 diameter, and then indicate across the top of both of them. Look for zero. You don't have to really measure anything. Keep the pin in your collet, make yourself a standard, saw it off, mill it off, make sure it's clean. Uh, you're probably not going to hit this right on the first try. You're going to be back and forth into the mill a half a dozen times to get this down to a correct length. But as soon as you have zero here and zero here, you know that the top of that standard is now on center with your, with your lathe. The other easy way to do that is to just face a piece off. If it doesn't have that little tip that you can feel with your fingernail, or it doesn't get to the center and then overcome the center because it's shearing it off and not cutting it off, then you know you're on center. But sometimes you can't do that with an internal boring tool or a grooving tool or uh, a threading tool. So good technique. Let's take a walk out in the shop and show you how that's done. Okay guys, here's the setup. This is a half inch diameter gauge pin. If you don't have a half inch diameter gauge pin, use the uh, back side of a half inch end mill. Just mic it up, make sure it's 500. Here's the bar that I made, inch and a quarter diameter aluminum, milled off on both sides, big flat on it. I did not deburr this corner. It's not sharp. Well, actually, it is sharp, but there is no burr on it because you want this to register up against your tool so you have a nice, good corner uh, that's going to transition from the top of this to the cutting insert or tool. So 
Sweep across the top of your pin with your indicator and set your indicator to zero. Now when you get over to your new best friend here, put the radius pin on top of the plate that, or the top of the bar you just made and roll that under. Look for zero. Full diameter, half diameter. You got a zero in both circumstances. This is now exactly on center. And if you're wondering what I'm using to indicate that, it is a US General number 387 magnetic base that I stuck a uh, dowel pin in to hold all the magnets together. Quick release on the back, fine adjustment. This guy too is about 30 years old. Love it, wouldn't be without it. All right, now that you're done with your part, you know how high it is, see how it works. If you can feel that tool when you drag your finger across the top of it, it's too high. Lower it down a little bit. And if it falls off the top into a step and you can't get back on real easy, then it's too low. Your fingers will get incredibly sensitive to the difference in between the tools and the, and the standard. There you go, that's money. There you go, centered. Another one that's a little bit too high. You may think your tools are on center, but until you make one of these, you're going to be surprised at how, how you find the condition of them. Still a little high. Anyway, guys, you get the idea. You now have a standard that's right on center with your part. This is how you check it. It's a very visual thing. It's a very technique feel thing. Nice thing to have. I'm going to go handheld here for a second. I know there's a couple of you that don't like that. But how many of you have ever tried to get this nut unloosened and this stud spins? Is that enough to frustrate you? Here's a little shorty trick for you. Take the end of an old file. Stick it right in there. When you turn this, the counterclockwise rotation wants to pull this in. Since the tang of the file is tapered, this locks up and this doesn't spin. Well, that's undoubtedly one of the shortest videos I've posted yet. I hope that you got something out of it. That little piece of aluminum I've kept on the side of my headstock. I've had it to my left side like I've, my left hand has been on my left side for the last 40 years running an engine lathe. It's a good thing to have. Putting the flat on there gives you a little bit more than just a tangent point to look for. Uh, make yourself one, keep it on the headstock of your lathe. Don't keep too many things on the headstock of your lathe because that's just a disaster waiting to happen if something were to fall into the jaw of a spinning chuck. Boom, you're just not fast enough to get out of the way and it could cause a real problem. Hope you like what you saw. If you like what you saw, thumbs up, subscribe, tell a friend. I appreciate you watching. Thanks, Joe from Advanced Innovations. I'm out.